Okay, so I did say in the other video that I've got on my channel, which is actually um, to do with lock picking uh, and the electronic EPG, I don't do many videos. Um, the main reason why I did that video is because there was no other videos out there, so I thought I'd pop one out <coughs> to uh, help anybody interested in buying one. So I've got a couple of videos um, that I'm going to be posting up and they're actually to do with battery testers um, working on cars is actually my day to day job so I fix cars effectively and battery testing is one part of such job <coughs> excuse the cough, getting over a bit of a cold um, so in the past I've had quite a few cheap battery testers that people have raved on about on YouTube and all that lot and said they're absolutely brilliant and you must buy this and all this that and the other and I've gone and bought them and I've used them and I'm thinking okay you, I'm, I'm trusting the battery tester now when I tested some brand new batteries that were getting fitted into cars the other testers were failing the new batteries so I was like hang on a minute that's not right <clears throat> have I been given duff new batteries so I had new batteries retested elsewhere with much more, you know, expensive equipment um, and they all came back as okay. So I've been on a little bit of a, a personal mission to find a reliable battery tester at a fairly decent price without buying Medtronics and Bosch and stuff like that. So I've got a couple. Um that are probably the more reliable of the cheap battery testers. So I waffled on enough. So we're gonna get in. This is a Top Dom BT600. This one has a little thermal printer in it. Um, not gonna get involved in doing charging system tests and cranking tests and stuff like that because I don't need to. Um, so let me shove this one onto this battery. All these batteries I've had a full bench charge <coughs> using a uh, smart charger and they've all been tested up at a local battery specialist place. Um, I forget what machine they were using but it was a pretty expensive unit. It might have been a Bosch, I can't remember, or Medtronics, I can't remember. Um, obviously I wasn't allowed to film any of that. Um, because they didn't give permission so I just scribbled the results down and I just printed them off because I can't read my own writing so you can't either so anyway enough of uh, waffling so we are an EN so we've got a battery test this one's a regular flooded it's an EN and it's a, a 300 now this is a very very simple tool I actually quite like these dedicated type battery testers um, the other ones that I'll be testing are all app based so there we go we're testing and we've got 160 amps 28% 12.61 volts and it was tested at 187 so we're a little bit down but it's not too far off so that's not so bad now we're going to jump over to this one because this is just the way I've put them up on the bench now this one as you can see full charge it only got to 9.74 and whoops let's go back this is an EFB it's still an EN and it's 500 there we go Battery voltage is too low, yes. Now, if you were testing a battery on a can, it was at 9 point odd volts, you would be starting the car up and at least using an amp clamp to have a look at how many amps that battery was taking. If it was taking poor amps, there's a good indication that the battery is not going to recover. Ideally as well, you put it on a charger for 24 hours, say, and then retest it, which is what we've done with this one. This has been on charge for 24 hours prior to the testing at the uh, battery place. So we got 
retest after charging. Now, theirs pretty much came back similar. You know, had bench charge, not calculated, charge and retest. So, you get a result like that, you know the battery's knackered. We're going to jump onto this one now. So this is an EFB battery again. And it's still an EN. And it's a 700 amp. <clears throat> and yeah, as you can see, we've had a bit of a iffy connection by the looks of it there because this battery is not producing 6,888 amps sometimes this can happen with battery testers so if you get a reading like that you know it's not uh, right let's try again and it remembers the, the previous test so we just go straight through so there you go, it's come back as replace, 489 amps, 49%. And this one, where was it? There we go, 12.82, came out at 571. And 47%. So the percentages is not far off. We had 489 here. And... 571 there so there's quite a bit of a difference in the amps recorded battery still pretty much needs replacing although their test result came back as replace soon this one came back as replace now so there is a little bit of a, a discrepancy there but that battery wasn't brilliant anyway so it's pretty much done its job now we're going to go on to this one. This one's not had a bench charge. And again we are EFB again. EN and it's another 700 amp. So we've got good battery charge. So the voltage is a little bit on the, the low side. But... It's pumping out 587 amps out of 700 according to this one. Now on this one, there you go, it's the 4 EFB there. 12.29 volts, so the voltage has uh, come up a little bit since this was tested. And it was producing 735 amps. This one is 587. So again, it's quite quite low. But it's come back as good recharge. Now on to the new batteries. Which is where you want your battery tester to be as accurate as possible. Having a battery tester failing new batteries isn't good. So battery test, we are regular flooded. It's an EN and it's a 440 amp. So we've got a good battery, and it's reading 416 out of 440 amps. So it's passing the battery, which is a good, good thing. However, it says it's at 89% health. If we look on here, it's actually producing 473 out of 440. So it's a little bit low, but it's still passing a good battery. Let's move over to this AGM battery. And we are AGM, it's an EN and it's an 800.
So go battery charge, 694 out of 800 amps. The testing people said it was 830. So it was actually putting out 830 amps. So this is reading a good 136 amps difference. Now, with such batteries such as this, this machine could fail the battery as a just about fail, but yet a more expensive battery tester will actually pass it without a single problem. So this is where some of the problems can lie. You know, your battery tester could be saying, yes, you need a battery, but yet in reality, your battery's fine. So you do need to be sort of careful-ish. You don't want to be mis-selling batteries. You know, some places will, and some places will blatantly do that regardless. You know, um, I've seen some garages actually print a test off and it's actually passed a battery test, but then they've given some bloody scientific jargon to the uh, customer and they've gone, blah, 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 you need a new battery because of this, that and the other. Um, it just happens to, that the person knows me, so they said, can you have a look at it? And I've gone, well, I don't actually have a battery tester. Uh, let's take it to somewhere I know that will do a proper test. And it's passed the test. So, yeah. Sometimes machines, the cheaper stuff, are not always perfectly accurate. So, there's just a little bit of review, review on the Top Don BT600. It's a nice little tester. Um, I do actually like it. Um, however sometimes batteries the results are not what they need to be and they're not what they are either so there we go i've waffled on for 12 minutes now um there's going to be a few more videos um, i have a launch battery tester i have a, another top down bluetooth tester and i have a sealy bluetooth battery tester and um, we're gonna do a little video on each of those just to see what they compare to these numbers on here and the one that gets the closest is the one that i'm going to be using so there we go thank you very much for watching this video on battery testers